Recently in America, a bunch of Tesla drivers have been given basically full self-drive capabilities. So the cars are now doing roundabouts and they're going around junctions. It's absolutely amazing. Whereas here in the UK, Tesla drivers have recently been given the ability to open the windows slightly from within the Tesla app. Who's the real winner? So in this video, basically what I wanna do is I wanna show off some recent updates that we've had over here in the UK. Another recent software update is now when the car locks, the windows will automatically close. Ooh. How fancy is that? Look at that. No one's getting in there. And if say I was to accidentally leave one of the doors open, such as the front, after 10 minutes, <laughs> after 10 minutes, you actually get a little notification on your phone that just lets you know that you've left one of your doors open and you need to go sort it out. And that's actually quite handy because I have actually done that on a few different occasions. Oh, look, he's back inside the car now. Hey, remember that really fancy glove box, which you can open by clicking glove box button, but you can't actually close the glove box. You have to manually do it every time. Or you could do this, open glove box. And look at that, it opens just like magic. Well, Tesla have recently added a new feature. If we go into safety and security and scroll all the way to the bottom, look at this. You can set a pin for your glove box. Becky, what do you want the number to be? Ooh, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Excellent. There we go, look at that. So now, if I do this, open glove box, please. I have to enter the pin. One, two, three, four. And Yay. as if by magic, it opens up. So obviously that's great, a lot more secure if somebody's cleaning your car or if, you know, somebody breaks in, it means you can constantly have stuff in your glove box nice and secure. Also worth noting is if we have a look in here, this little memory stick is my Sentry Cam, which is like Tesla's dash cam. But in the 2020 models, the dash cam's been moved into the glove box. So that prevents the idea of somebody breaking in, the car filming it, but then the person that broke into the car just stealing the video evidence and you having nothing at all. On the 2020 cars, if they break in, they can't steal your Sentry Cam if it's locked inside your glove box. Oh look, now the car's moving. So the other few major software updates, there's a few small things like Bluetooth priority, which nobody cares about, but they've just generally made autopilot slightly better. Nowhere near as fancy as the US, but still quite fancy. So you saw in one of our previous videos that the car will now stop at stop signs when it's on autopilot. So I'm gonna try and turn autopilot on here. There we go. And you can see stopping for traffic control in 100 feet because there is a stop sign and I'm not doing anything, but the car has come to a stop absolutely beautifully. And if we have a look at the map, you can see the stop sign and you can see the 30. And Becky, if you look out the window, it portrays everything beautifully. You can't really see them from this angle. Look at that, you can see them better in the car than you can see them in real life. Absolutely amazing. I am actually really, really impressed with how the car now shows speed signs and how it recognizes them. You can see we've got some 60 mile an hour national speed limit signs coming up. And if I get close enough, look at that. You can see them right there and they portray so nicely. I just, look at that. Look how good it looks. They are really, really accurate. Once you go past them, the car recognizes that you're in a new speed zone and it sets you to the appropriate speed limit. Hey, by the way, make sure to subscribe. We upload once a week. Look how nice and autumnal it is right now. I don't know why that would encourage you to subscribe, but it's still, I thought it was worth mentioning, if, if I'm honest. What I will mention is the car does not yet see giveaway signs. I think that's because that's more of a UK thing, but you can see we're coming to some giveaway signs here and the car doesn't see anything at all. A giveaway sign basically does the same thing as a stop sign would. But right now, it's only stop signs that the car can see. And then for the remainder of this video, we're just gonna go around some corners on autopilot and see if we think it's any better because when Becky and I weren't recording, we whacked autopilot on and I actually wasn't that impressed. It felt like, um we were going a little bit too quick round corners and I feel like we went round corners better on autopilot a few months ago. So I'm not quite sure why that is, but let's go ahead and test that. So I reckon we'll put autopilot on here because we are coming up to a corner and the car is speeding us up. This is going much faster than I would want to go around the corner. Bloody hell, we're, we're proper racing around. <laughs> See, previously it slowed us down for corners, whereas if, if anything, it feels like it's speeding us up. It's definitely speeding us up. Here we go, here we go, that's better, that's more like it. That's still too quick, <laughs> but it is. it has slowed us down to 40, which is good. I'm just gonna hold on to the wheel, but I'm not controlling the car. Oh, it's took us around this corner quite nicely. It always comes a bit wide coming out this corner. Oh, it's gone so slow, it doesn't wanna take any risks. It did, yeah, it just gets wide. I don't know why, but it always gets really wide at that point in time. You can see on there, it got really close to the to the right. All right, we're gonna spin around and we're gonna try those same set of corners 
but just from the other side of the road. Because autopilot is a little bit weird there sometimes. All right, here we go. So historically, autopilot slowed down way more than it needs to on this corner. This time, it's actually taking it at a reasonable speed. So I'm not controlling the car, but I'm gonna hold on to the wheel. Oh. Oh, oh, I had to take over there. It was definitely going a bit, a bit wide. So definitely not very impressed with autopilot that time. You know what, Becky, I want to do it a couple more times. I'm going to turn autopilot on on this little tricky corner. So this would be a portion of the road where you would speed up. But you can see there is a corner up there. So now at this point, I would start slowing down. Autopilot, on the other hand, I'm going to take over. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think it's fascinating how far behind we are compared to the US. I'm just one software update below the recent self-driving software update that America have gotten, but I'm just not impressed at all. Now I know that UK roads, they're a lot windier, they're a lot smaller and narrower than a lot of US roads, generally speaking anyway. But I just can't see how we're gonna be close to uh, self-driving anytime soon. I've whacked autopilot back on again. Let's do those same roads. I'm gonna just slow us down to 49 miles an hour. So the car's limited to 49, but hopefully it slows us down a little bit more as well. Once again, holding the wheel, but not controlling the wheel. Ah. <laughs> it's slowing us down. It's slowing us down later than it should have. Around this corner, going at 30. Okay, is it gonna go really wide? Take note of its road position on the screen. Okay, it slowed us down way more than it needed to. And then look at that, goes really wide right at the end. On what you'd describe as the easiest part of the corner is the part where it goes really wide. That is so, so strange. Yeah, autopilot. I'm really not too impressed, to be honest. We've got a train track coming up. Let's find out if the car's gonna slow us down or are we just gonna race over the top of the train track? I'm a bit nervous. I might slow us down a bit, <laughs> just manually with the wheel. All right, I'm gonna slow us down to 27, but I'm hoping it slows us down a bit more. Here we go. It did slow us down a bit. That wasn't too bad, honestly. The beep was just because I hadn't touched the wheel in a little while, but overall I'd say that was okay. So there's a little 40 up here. It's a really small sign. Let's see if the car recognizes it or not. Oh, it did. Very nice. So I am quite impressed with how it spots those little signs because even when they're the miniature versions, the car still s seems to see them more or less every time. Okay, I'm gonna go on autopilot when I can. There we go. And let's see, does the car automatically change our speed? once we go through this 60 zone. So the car recognizes we're now in a 60 zone, but it's keeping us on 40 miles an hour. So if I click that, now it'll increase our speed a little bit more. Obviously I'm gonna keep an eye out on what's going up here on the right. Yeah, we're absolutely fine. So there's a sharp corner up here, and I just wanna see how autopilot faces this sharp corner. It looks like our speed will be managed by this slow moving vehicle in front though, so that'll probably make things slightly easier. But let's just see how it does, and then we can end off the video. Here we go, so the car in front is keeping us at about 38 miles an hour. Oh, there's a lorry. Okay, I'm just gonna get very ready to take over. It did that beautifully, I would say. It slammed on when it saw the lorry and it took us down to 22 and kept us really safe. On the back end of the corner though, you might have noticed that it did once again kind of push us further into the middle of the road than I would like. Let's see what it does here where there's no lanes at all. Very tricky corner. I'm gonna slow down. I'm very ready to take over. Okay, we've got a car in front and now we're gonna have to take over. So what happened there was because there's no lanes on this part of the road, the car thought that this was a single lane. So it basically just pushed me into the middle of the road, which is obviously not safe at all if this car's coming the other way. But anyway, I reckon we should end the video there. I like all the little changes with the glove box and the windows and stuff. It's just nice extra things. It's always cool when your car can do something that it couldn't do when you first purchased it. But in terms of autopilot in the UK, still a very, very long way to go. And uh, I think it's gonna be ages before we are at the stage that America is now at. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you did enjoy. Click that like button, subscribe with notifications. And I'll see you later.